So there's some updates in addition to the information we've already had about this reservoir. But as I said, it has been upgraded. It is slightly longer, the aqueduct now, and no longer goes this way. That was the Thirlmere. But it turns out it's Thirlmere pours water and basically all the Lake District is now linked via pipes and pumping stations to the main aqueducts which I was discussing it used to go straight to Eaton Park now it goes direct to Eaton Park from one Thirlmere aqueduct but the other aqueduct goes around the side north of Manchester that is running through Berry. So this supplies Berry with drinking water and it's been upgraded. So everything is okay right now. It goes out a little bit. Two separate aqueducts now. Uh, it was upgraded in 1955 and is constantly being upgraded. So I'm just going to show you a section that leads to Heaton Park from here. So that's the start. It's your first inlet. Behind the fence in the distance, side of that white house, drops down the hill. The siphon begins its descent here, down towards the River Roach and on towards Heaton Park Reservoir. So at the side of the motorway, drops all the way down, heat bridges in the distance. And it's underground, remember? Now, the thing with a siphon, there's very little air or non, no air in the system. So, you, as long as you drop it, you drop it down, say, 50 metres, you can go along the ground, you can travel up the other side 45 metres. Doesn't matter how far away, without any pumps. That is a siphon. That's how a siphon works, because there's no air. It's the weight of the water falling pulls more water along. So the pipe is underground here at the side of the roach. Just jump along a little bit. This section of the upgrade is actually complete. But by the year 2023, the whole system is to be reinstalled, completely changed. Um, the old aqueduct is insufficient. So that's strong enough evidence. It's underground here. Doubt very much we're going to see anything there. So I'm just going to shoot to the siphon over the roach. Should pick up some depth from the sound. That'll go right through the all of the gimbal you see. That's physics again. So it's quite deep. Also, the grass is quite long. And although I've got quite a short distance to walk. From Heat Bridge. Woodgate Hill is in the distance and Castle Hill. And the motorway, I'll just pan across quick as we go towards the roach because the sun's in that direction. What we should start to see now this is a place where the river neanders. It comes back on itself. It goes under the motorway. You can see it, something rising up out of the ground just before the bank, the river bank. So remember what I said, the siphon can go underground 30 metres. 
and pop back up like this over the river and then drop back down again on the other side of the river underground again without any pumps it's because of the weight of the water behind it pushing it that's what this is this is the upgraded crossing it used to be tunneled under the roach it's seen as too expensive to repair that but there is a tunnel under here too and probably the best shot we'll get from it is a private site dangerous site I suppose but you can see quite easily the pipe crossing over the roach into the fields beyond yeah so it's part of the longest underground system in Europe longer than anything the Romans built but it's the same principles as what the Romans used to do with aqueducts and it's being upgraded for the future obviously but most sections of underwater aqueducts apparently have something like three bridges each you will see the black brick also it's made from crosses over there anyway yeah so it's bigger than anything from the ancient world but it's based on their principles but most improvements have something like three tunnels underground this has 29 between here and Heaton Park it crosses the airwell it also goes under the Metrolink and it goes the other way towards Haywood it's all pumped from the service reservoirs and this is the Hawes water aqueduct just jump over through editing techniques to the other side of the roach farewell for now well you won't see the jump will you Ping. as if by magic this is the pipe and there's a civil engineer cover just down this road I'm on I'm going to show you down that I'm not sure if it's part of the aqueduct but it's still interesting because it means the siphon goes under yet another brook and the motorway and the river not forgetting of course it goes under the railway there is quite a lot of mist water is of course one of the only elements that can exist um, at different temperatures for the gas so it's vapour, mist and steam so what we've got is a mixture of water vapour and air pressure um, we can all use our imaginations to see what's down there with the sound but it's a good reminder, a stark reminder, of all that's going on underneath us, all the water systems. So as we can see, when we're inside a tunnel, so we're going to get the echo and doing it live. Um, I'm zooming up there, so there's, you can see a windmill, but that's Wood Hill. So that's Wood Hill Reservoir. It has to pass under here, where the railway would have been, and this tunnel would have existed at that time. So the upgrade was only finished in the 50s and they're still working on it really. This tunnel is a good example of the sort of thing that is underground 
you know, carrying the water, a bit smaller. But it's all been changed, the whole system has to be upgraded. And that's why we saw the siphon filter down that crosses over the roach. And then this would be the next site. Just going to look at this tunnel, the way it's made. It's got some extensions on either end. I'm just going to walk through. Try and get some of the sea away. But at some point, it goes underground. So this is a good way of showing you this is as good a place as any It'll, for it to go through. Makes perfect sense actually, but I don't know how it works. It's deep underground. Something like 30 metres under at some points. So it's an aqueduct and tunnels, but inside that is a steel pipe. It used to be an iron pipe, but the whole system needed replacing and updating. They've used something called micro tunneling. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but I assume it's small tunnels and then you blast through and make a bigger tunnel. So some of the old countryside pops up here, we'll get a brook. I'm forgetting the name of this brook at the moment. But this is the M66 section of the motorway. The M62, of course, M61. And it was the M602, M603, I think, Ring Road. All went in, you know, in the same time, part of the structure. And the water systems go underneath it all and supply all of Manchester. Uh, there's places where this aqueduct pops out and crosses the Irwell over a bridge and Woodgate Reservoir, which is the one we're discussing now, is actually linked to another reservoir close to Liverpool. Um, it's 65 metres below this reservoir, so the water flows there, gravity fed, but it can be pumped back from the reservoir to Berry if we need it in Berry and that means they can shut down sections of aqueduct and repair them and pump directly in between the service reservoirs like I say it's been upgraded uh, it's constantly being worked on it's literally hundreds and hundreds of miles now of siphons and pipes underneath the ground and it really is amazing but you can't film it so the engineers to go down there but one of the things before we could go down and have a look, we used to check it regularly on the surface. We used to walk it and there's little markers at the surface apparently. So we're gonna have a look at some of those in a future playlist. But I'm gonna show you that I think I can see just at least four manhole covers. And it looks like just over we go we film this brook here and then we'll go into this field and we'll see some sign I, will, I think that looks like a post to identify where the aqueduct runs and it's a good enough guess and it's in direct alignment with everything else we've seen so yeah it's worth saying that we can probably trace some of it and I know some of the bridges I want to film I've seen one bridge it's down near Salford Funnily enough, it all goes through Salford and under the Berry Bolton Canal once again. It's all interlinked, it goes under Metro Links, it goes all over the place. And we're going to trace as much as we can, but not today. Um, there was an introduction to this playlist which said I would now end here and then start to separate my playlists again. Uh, this was a short playlist which explains how I just dive in feet first, as you can see. I didn't know anything about this. I just went up to the Watergate, uh, Woodgate Reservoir and just started filming and talking. And I found out as I've gone, as you've seen with the castle site. But I believe it's time now to separate again. Um, the castle site will go cold now. I'm happy with my description of it. And of course, Manchester. It has to go through the modern motorway. Heaton Park's on the other side of the motorway. 
and you can see about four different eras in time all laid across the top of one another. When I said I could find bits, it's not really the proper archaeological way of doing things, you need to dig trenches, so for, for now it has to be paused. But hopefully you've seen, um, I do have strong evidence that there was castles there and maybe these things should be looked into further. Also, the history of this aqueduct is now probably going to be, you know, I'm going to look into this a little bit further to see how far it, it goes up into Lancashire. But remember, this is Manchester UK playlist. So I'm not going to go outside the borders of Greater Manchester, which I have never done. No matter how far I have been in any of my playlists and all the videos I've done, I'm still within the boundaries of the north of Manchester. Okay, so peace out everybody. I hope I've got everything in there. Oh, I just wanted to mention another thing about the reservoirs. Once I said about Berry, it had so many coal mines under there, but most of it was hollow. And I said it as a joke. Well, the engineers who dug these aqueducts and upgraded them, and it was only 2007, and there's actually a forum going on at the moment, but because of coronavirus, the forum is paused. So this system will probably be finished in 2024 instead. But it is going ahead, it's all being upgraded. But when they dug, they had a great difficulty with the sections because they kept tunneling into solid rock. Then there was like four miles of peat bogs and then just open, empty, um, like coal mines. They're just drilling through and suddenly there's massive open caverns that they had to secure with concrete. And so half of it was missing. Yeah, so it goes through red sandstone, granite rock, slate. It has to go under rivers, it goes through peat bogs, it goes through open spaces. But imagine that's not as easy as it sounds because the water can't just flood the coal mine and then it contaminate the water. So the tube has to go right through open disused coal mines from centuries ago. It's unbelievable. It really is an unbelievable feat of engineering. Right under our feet. Okay, take care everyone. I think that's all the information. And as I say, we're going to end with our castle, which we never found, but the reasons for which are in there. And that's the end of this playlist. It's all taken place during the coronavirus, as I said. So I've done my best to put together some interesting facts, all basically based on Castle Hill and around Woodgate Reservoir. Peace out, Manchester. Oh yeah, 75 years from the end of the Second World War.